that's no moon. Clear May 27. We are opening the magnetic field. Hello there, and welcome to Docking Bay 327. Today, we're going to be talking about the most difficult build I've had to make yet. Now, I know I said that about haunted carbonite back here, and at the time, that was true. But this one actually took a lot longer than I anticipated, uh, almost three months to be exact. There were a lot of struggles along the way, and I learned a whole lot. But I started with what I know, and figured out the rest. So I did want to give a shout out to Brian Thompson from the Smuggler's Room and James Cully from Rebel Base Builds. Uh, both those guys have been very helpful throughout this process, uh, giving me some tips and tricks, you know, what not to do. Um, but uh, anyway, they went out of their way to help me. So I uh, just want to say thanks, guys. Appreciate it very much. Now, this is a pretty lengthy build, like I mentioned. Um, so I've tried to condense the footage to a reasonable amount of time, but I didn't want to leave out the important things. Um, so hopefully it can uh, help you, inspire you, and all of that. So I'm going to take you all the way through it. Let's get into it. This build begins with the iconic circular bench seen on the Millennium Falcon. I've always loved the way this bench looks, and I decided I had to have one for my Star Wars room. So here's the back part of my office, which is my music room. Now as you can see, I don't have enough space to build the entire bench, but I do have this corner that will hold almost half of one. As usual, I began by mapping out the area in Illustrator and working out the design. I measured out just how much room I had and just how much of the bench I could build. I sliced out the semicircle into five identical pieces for the seat. I also drew out the profile of the bench to scale. Then I created another file that measured four foot wide by eight foot tall to see just how many pieces I could cut out of one sheet of plywood. From there, I printed out the individual designs on regular desktop printer paper and taped them all together to create a full-size template. Once I had the first piece cut, I used it to trace out the rest, which made things go a lot quicker. I used the same process for the seat wedges as well. I decided to use these 1 inch by 1 inch pine boards to build out a frame for each seat wedge. This handy tool was invaluable throughout this build. It has a driver on one end and a countersink drill bit on the other. It has this quick lock and release mechanism that makes things go very quickly from drilling to driving in the screws. Once I had all the pieces cut and the framed seat wedges completed, I began assembling the main frame. Next was building out the back supports. I used the same one by one boards to frame these out as well. I then used 1 8 inch masonite to create a partial shell and I used cardboard to create a template for the bottom seat due to all the difficult curves and angles. This would be used as a smooth surface to glue the next layer of 8 millimeter foam. So far so good. Contact cement is the best adhesive for this foam 
and will be used throughout the rest of this build. But be sure and wear a respirator because the fumes are really strong. The 8mm foam formed to the curves beautifully. It is flexible yet durable and very easy to cut. I really enjoyed working with it. I purchased it from TNT Cosplay and will put a link to their site in the description below. Because of all the difficult angles and curves, there were a few seams, so I used this gap filler from TNT as well. It did the job quite nicely. For the seat, I really struggled with how to cover the multiple curves both across the bench and down the front. Thankfully, my friend James Cully from the Rebel Base Builds shared this trick with me of using plain white printer paper to drape over the shape. I continued to layer the paper until I had just the right coverage. I taped it all together, sliced up the paper into wedges, and used them as templates to cut out the foam. Also, for the front curves, I made some guides with 1 inch by 2 inch boards, but I wanted a better gluing surface, so I used my brad nail gun and tacked some styrene to the guides. Once the foam skin layer was attached, I went back with more of the gap filler to hide the seams. Once it cured, it sanded very nicely. Now it was time for the thicker foam pads that give the bench its iconic look. James helped me out with this as well by providing an initial pattern. This is the file he shared. Now because my bench is a unique size, I adjusted the overall pattern and shapes so it would fill out my bench evenly. I printed out all the shapes and test fit them to the actual bench to make sure it would work. And I sprayed some primer to create a stencil to help with placement. From there, I used those patterns to trace onto the 22 millimeter foam. I wanted to be sure and utilize as much of the foam as possible, so I added as many shapes to each foam square as I could, so I wasted very little material. I used a craft knife to cut out each and every pad by hand. The foam cut very cleanly. Of course, I made sure and sharpened the blade after every few passes. Otherwise, you can get messy, jagged edges that require even more work to clean up later. For the back of my bench alone, I had 38 pads, all of which I rounded over with my router, sanded by hand, sealed with my heat gun, and sanded some more. I used a combination of techniques from both James Cully and Brian Thompson, and I'll leave a link below to both of their videos so that you can check out their builds. Thanks again, guys. I really appreciate your help with this build. Finally, it was time to attach all the pads to the bench. I came up with a pretty good method of applying contact cement then holding it in front of a fan for a few seconds, which helped speed up the process for the glue to become tacky, which also helped the pads adhere to the back more quickly. While the primer stencil was a good idea, I still traced a lot of the pads because their size and shape was altered by the sanding and roundover edges. Plus, tracing gave me a more exact spot to apply the contact cement. Once all the pads were attached, I sprayed the entire bench with a flat gray primer. It is truly amazing how a layer of primer brings the entire bench together into one cohesive piece.
Off camera, I covered the whole bench with a tan Plasti Dip. Then I applied a black wash with burnt umber to give it that used universe feel. And here it is in its new home, including the Greeblies I showed you how to make in my last video. So there you go, a Millennium Falcon bench in my music room that I can sit on and play my guitar and enjoy two of the things that I really love. Now since my bench is completed, of course that means the rest of that area in the room also needs to be turned into a Star Wars spaceship. So I've got plenty of plans for 2022. I'm going to build the control panels on the back of the bench, the walls behind it. I've got a couple doors on the other side, as well as my guitar amps. All of it is going to be turned into a used universe from a galaxy far, far away. So be sure and subscribe and hit that notification bell. That way you'll be alerted as I push out new content in the new year. Thank you for all the likes and comments, the stories that you've shared. Some of you have been inspired to build your own Star Wars geekness, which is exactly why I do this and it's how I got started so thank you all very much hope you all have a very Merry Christmas I have a special edition episode planned for next week that I hope you will enjoy and until next time build with what you know and figure out the rest